I have not encountered the investiture controversy in CK3. Really? Is it is it is it hidden somewhere that I just haven't gotten no. to, or is it something that might come later? It's something that might come later. Oh. Yeah. It's just one I'm of those very... things that didn't work well in Crusader Kings 2. It was yeah. like a trivial sure. mechanic no one liked. So we decided to put it on the back burner for CK3 yeah. rather than to translate a poor mechanic. Yeah. Well, fun, funny enough, we also decided not to talk about it a lot in our book because it just wasn't... Not that it wasn't important, because it is important, but it just didn't... Like, it was never quite fitting what we were trying to do in a given chapter here and there. Um, so I'm right with you. We'll, we'll both put it in our expansions that, that come Oh, is the this a Philip DLC, thing to yeah. do, by the way? What's well, happening right now? Oh, let's have some adultery. I definitely think some adultery is important. Um, I mean, Philip... I forget Philip's nickname, but it's something about the lustful or something. At least well, he was the that's... fat, too. So. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> lustful and fat, they go together. He was. Yeah. yeah. Now, now again, I, I have a whole like forty-five minute lecture about why that's that's uh, monastic slander against him later on, but uh, I will uh, I will I will save that for for later on. So. Uh, so the question that we got cut off on was, how do you navigate when designers come to different conclusions with research, especially with a team as large as CK? Oh, I I almost finished that one. Almost, I think yeah. I I ended it on um, that we tend to lean towards the most fun, mm -hmm. but also the, the conflicts are usually resolved quite quickly because yeah. if there's differences, they usually come up when designers do research on their own. Yeah. But when they come together and talk about it, they can see what, what's the most reliable source, what's, the be what's best for the game, and so on, and it usually resolves itself. Yeah. I can't actually uh, even think of any time where it hasn't resolved itself. Or if it doesn't resolve itself immediately, we all go out for a beer hash it out over a beer, and then it's resolved the next day. Ah, academic work. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. So, uh, a question for the authors. Uh, from a history point of view, do you find that your students that play CK3 and EU4 and have good surface knowledge from the time periods? Yeah. Uh, no, Let's take it, Matt. Yeah, no, I think one of the, like, David had mentioned this kind of earlier in the stream, but I think one of the most exciting things is that when students come in with, with some sort of knowledge or some sort of excitement about the period, and CK3 is absolutely one of the ways that that happens. You know, I think, you know, some of our colleagues sometimes think that, um, you know, playing a video game gives them the wrong impression, gives students potentially the wrong impression right. about the period. But I mean, you know, we, we differentiate between fiction and reality like all the time. I mean, like, you know, we understand it's a game, it's it's a game, right? Like yeah. but there's a there's a there's an excitement, there's a there's a um there's a there's a sense of the actual past that underlays it, which we can deepen in a classroom, right? Or with, with other types of readings and things like that. So I think it's it's extremely ex exciting when people kind of know. Plus you know, we were talking about earlier, like, I love making dumb pop culture references. Yeah. And like, I want people to get them. So like, if they game or watch movies or read books, like, that's great, then they'll get my jokes. Yep. Otherwise, it's just me standing in front of the room being a terrible stand up comic. So. Well, yeah, you know, getting paid a different pay scale for it, I guess. That's well, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's right. You know, just there's, there's, a, there's a lot of work at the beginning of any history class of just kind of getting students fluent in the world you're talking about. So like the map, the the families, the names, the places, right? And and a game like this does all of that work for you. It does all of that work for you. They're already fluent in the world. Um, and nobody, I mean, I've never encountered a student who thought a game, because something happened in a game, it must be true. They they want to know this happened in a game. Is there anything right? It's it's a it's a an entry point for a question, not well, it happened in the game, so you must be wrong. Yeah. And no, it's that they, it's it's a conversation starter. And right. I think as a teacher, having things to start a conversation, there's just nothing yeah. like a genuine point of interest to talk about. Like you, you have to work really hard to find those sometimes. So some, a game like this just does so much work. Oh, I already won it. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. You, you, took it you. you took it. You took his son. He's desperate. Excellent. Just keep him. Excellent. Keep him. Um, All right. Uh, there's yeah. Brittany. Yeah, it's, right, now, it's, it's very much... I'm curious well, to see who you want to rule Brittany now. It's, it's very, yeah, I was going to say, it's well, very much a, a, a topic of, of, now that you've got yeah. it, what are you going to do with it? Um, well, I thought I might give it to my brother. That was what I was thinking. I thought I might give him, 
but also my my wife is pregnant so i might just wait and see um though i guess under partition i probably won't be able to give it to my kids so i might just give it to my brother did this happen in, um, in real life or who would philip grant such a duchy to if he got the chance you think matt yeah, well, some of his most some of his closest advisors were just the barons around the um, the the the, the Ile de France. Um, so it could have been one of them. Um, his brother was a, was an Im immensely important ally of Philip's throughout his life, though, as well. Is that ended up being the the Count of Vermandois um, after um, uh, the death of the the previous count, and so that was a really important kind of bulwark as Philip was uh, uh, basically getting in trouble with Normandy and stuff like that. So so. The brother is not a bad choice. That that could have been a very, um, um, you know, I don't know how the game's going to turn out if that becomes kind of a a, a, a point of uh, contention later mm -hmm. on. But mm -hmm. uh, I think he's gonna almost certainly. he's honored and maybe also not because now he has all the rebellious yeah. counts in Brittany to exactly. deal with. Exactly, exactly, including I mean, that, the former ruler. <laughs> yeah, that's not an that's not an accident. That um, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, but we'll, yeah. we'll see. Hopefully, he can handle it. Had Nurgle's go, arm go all the way through the screen, all the way to Alexander. Nurgle is magic. Literally, actually magic. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of some prisoners now. So let's have Oh, Thibaut died. I got to say that the, the, the high lords of France are not the greatest skilled people I've ever, I've ever encountered in no, this game. Absolutely stage, not. But, but that's fine. I think that's, they're not always the most... Like it, and I like the choice of this game. You can kind of find the 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 most skilled person, or you can do the political move, and there are trade-offs there. Um, that or you can leave it to fate. Kill me. Don't forget I bet it's my brother. Don't don't so forget. What? Don't forget. You can also just leave it to fate. Um, the third option of I don't know what I'm doing. Please help. Yeah. By the way, so something I mentioned before was how characters travel across the world. And mm -hmm. another comment is, we generally try to keep the, the game as historically plausible as possible. But we have one exception to this, and it's that the developers are actually in the game. For example, me. Really? I am in. Yes. So one way to track what happens to a character that is just passively existing in the world. So I start out in Sweden. But if you use the mm -hmm. character uh, search function to look for me, I might be doing anything else. I might be dead, I might be a bishop somewhere, I might be someone's knight, I might be in Russia, having traveled. That's so, not uh, right, Matt. You should call him Louis. Oh, I should call him Louis, right, right, right. How about Clovis? You could do that, too. That's, I'm not going to. That's a good name. Clovis is a solid name. I like it. Oh, we're, we're totally down. Yeah. So if you want to, you All can right. search for me history. Yeah, no. and see where I am, because then we know exactly where I started. Yeah, let's find out where to, Alexander is. I don't remember is. how to spell your name. Oh, just to go for my last name. O-L-T-N-E-R. O-L-T-N-E-R. Yeah, there I am. It's the, the coat of arms with the duck. Uh, no, if you go back, if you search for oh, it again. Oh, I see. I, I got you. I understand. Yeah, it's the coat of arms with a duck on it. There it is. So you can click that. And oh, then cool. uh, if you switch... Hungry to, like a duck. If you, if, you, if you switch from top realm to everyone in the first filter... Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. I have become yep. the Count of Helsing. <laughs> yes! Congratulations! Go. You're a cowardly planner. I, All right. I was contacted yeah. by my team once when I had become the King of Jerusalem <laughs> <laughs> for some obscure reason. That's that's a lot of... I feel like there's comfort eater. Is that is that coded in, or is that something you've added? I've added all of yeah. these traits myself. I mean, I'm I'm definitely a comfort eater. So just I, just uh, the big boy squad in here. Yep, we got the the biggest boys on the team. So here go ahead or don't you have a vanity ahead. character as well? I don't. You don't yet. I'm, I'm okay. mysteriously not in there. Yeah, and I I even have two heirs. Two, two beautiful children. Beautiful children. Yep. Beautiful children. All right. Well, we're gonna leave you up on the search screen just so we can check back in. <laughs> Wonderful. Since we've got you there. Oh, I love it. I, I, I absolutely love there's a lot of characters um from people that, you know, were very integral to the to the making of the game that are no longer with us. And every once in a while, you know, during streams or something, uh we'll come across one of those vanity characters and every time I'm like, Huh, buddy, no <laughs> It's like oh that's a little great. piece of history in there for you. I had no idea. That's 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 fun. That's news to me. Yeah, it's the one little sure. deviation from history we allow ourselves. I love it. I love and it. And maybe if you pay enough, you guys can get it in the game too. Yeah. 
right, well, send, send us an invoice. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I would like to be the Doge of Venice. I mean, that's really, yeah. that would really be, or even just like, you know, a random, a random member of the court. That would be pretty good. I think random, yeah, I think random courtier, you know, I think courtier, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. So. Wandering, wandering yep. Jewish advisor. Yeah. Oh, that, that would not be a bad idea at all. Yeah. No, it's solid. That's actually a solid, solid position. Right, well, I see you're taking right. some stress here, no matter what you do. <laughs> well, no matter what. I gotta say that compassionate plus paranoid is a pretty hard start. To yeah. Avoid. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing, we're doing fine. It's we're a fantastic fine, you know? combination. Sometimes you just need to play a character like that to realize yeah. how the game yeah. can play differently. Where yeah. yeah. You, you really must be nice, and if you're not, your head will explode. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. No, I, I like it. Um, I shall I grant this man properties, him. but what if he hates me? I want to pause on, on this event. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I I really think that, like, we have this kingdom of France, right? But then we have all of these, all these, these people who are fighting constantly. The, the local mm -hmm. nobles are fighting constantly, and they appeal to the king all the time, and sometimes the king can help, and sometimes the king can't. But really, like, he has very little authority over, at this point, over what's going on. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and we talk about that around the story of one one of Matt's favorite stories, the story of Saint Foy, mm -hmm. um, and this this um some I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. This is, oh here we go. This is this story time. this is a really good event for this kind of 11th century moment in, in of of kind of inchoate. Oh please do, I'll, I'll make notes. Yeah. No, it's especially especially in the 11th century, even into the 12th century, to a degree, is that the king is important that he's like he's there. But you, you want him, you, you know, you want to be able to appeal to him and him to help you, but you don't actually want him to show up. Yeah. Like, that's the, the last thing if you're a local <laughs> ruler you want him to do, right, is is you want to be able to get him to talk to somebody else, but you don't want him invading your personal space. And so, but in the absence of that, like, when we talk about um, uh, the relics of this, this saint called Saint Foy, Saint Faith, um, in the city of Conk, which is in southern France, um, you know, then there's there's alternate appeals to authority as well. And so saints kind of start to fill some of those gaps is that you, you rely upon holy power, which really means kind of bishops and monks and the people that they can kind of marshal, um, you know, in order to to enforce what used to be um, royal authority back in, you know, say the ninth century and would become royal authority again, like in the 13th or 14th century. But in this in between space, yeah, like, yeah, knights marching through your kingdom, like, good luck, lady. Um, you yeah. know, there's not a lot we can actually do about that from uh, from here in Paris. God, could you imagine um, being some like 11th century oh, pig farmer? Look, look, so this is exactly what we expected in Britain. Yep. Yeah, the revolt. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm watching. I'm watching. But could I you? Saw, I saw, I saw it glowing purple, and I'm like, oh dear, my brother's messed up. Yep. So you're you're saying, Troy? Just all of a sudden, you're you're an 11th century pig farmer, and you've appealed to the king to come and save your farm. And all of a sudden, the king shows up, and he's like, "All right, I'm here to fi fix your pig farm." Oh no! What have I done? Oh god! <laughs> like, yeah, I because don't... what the king's gonna do is like, "This is my pig yeah, farm now." Exactly. Good luck. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there go my pigs. Yep. Oh, I think it might be time for a pilgrimage, Matt. Ooh, yeah, definitely, absolutely. What's that? Right. What? What's that? Brittany revolting? My brother failing in his duties? Bye. <laughs> Bye. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's, let's go. Where should he go? I mean, clearly, clearly, God's mad at him, right? Like that. This is this is a very typical medieval thing to do when things aren't going bad. Uh, God is is manifesting his anger at you, and so you go on pilgrimage. You, you try to make amends, right? Yeah. yeah. Where where did I'm, you I'm choose go to go? See, so I'm going to Cologne, and um, historically, Cologne has the the relics of the three magi. Like that's their most important. That's their most important reliquary. They're really important. Um, and one of the interesting things about the three magi, I picked it for a bunch of reasons. One, I don't want to go to Rome because we decided we don't like the Pope. It's not realistic to go to Jerusalem in 1079 um, for a lot of reasons. Um, I mean, I think 10, isn't 1079 Al Hakim still, or is he? Is he? Has he lost power? No, anyway, I'm not. I'm no. not. You're right around, the, you're right around the time of the the pilgrimage of Baldwin of Flanders, 1080. Oh, well, so I'm totally wrong. Matt can talk more about Who is that. ruling in um, Jerusalem right now? We can take a look quickly and see if it's... Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go pop over there. But um, I uh, I mean, I just really like the Three Magi. And one of the reasons I like the Three Magi is they're often displayed in ways in art that speak to kind of the broader the broader hemispheric world because because they come from different parts of... They come from different parts of the sort of the, the of antiquity. And they're displayed in that way. And they're... And, um, 
So I I think they're really cool. Yeah, almost always one of them is black. Like in this, right. this was a normal yeah. thing in, in, in medieval Europe. I mean, we tend to think of, and this is one of the things that the game does extremely well as Alexander, you were talking about earlier, is that the way that people move, and this is true as we talk about in our book, is we use the term permeable. Like people who weren't white were in Europe in the middle ages. Like that's a thing that, that we have lots of sources about. So, uh-oh, that's I'm not sick. good. Yes. Do it anyway. You You're good, young. Man. You can handle illness. You got this. You got this. You got this. All right. All right. All right. No time to give up. Oh. Wait. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> they killed well, your we'll, brother. We're, we'll put. We're, let's put a pin in that. We'll come back in a minute. I mean, sometimes sometimes people die. I wanted to look at the history of Jerusalem. Um, title history. There we go. See how, how we're doing here. This is a, this is a bold reason. strategy. Letting your pilgrimage roll while you're checking out characters in a different region of the world. I mean, it is what it is. It's a bold strategy. I walk the holy path. And someone just murdered your brother, and now the faction is against you. I mean, it's not its not great. It's not great. Yeah, you're in I'm an not... active war now. <laughs> yeah, it's At not awesome. negative 5%. Oof. It's okay. Yeah, let's... Uh, I'm, I'm curious let's... how your brother died. Yeah, let's find out. Um, uh, it doesn't... I didn't actually get a pop-up from it, so let's... Maybe you weren't very close. Yeah, well, clearly it didn't. Smallpox. Oh, wow. Smallpox. Oh. They, they flung a cow over his wall, covered in smallpox. I mean, oh, he, no. he already had he already had gout. Um, oh, did he? I thought. Yeah. yeah, I thought there was a good chance that he might not uh, produce an heir, but you never know. Um, oh, man. Well, now you wow. have a widow um, as well that you can seduce. Hello, madam. Romance. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> I'm just not convinced that this that this Philip is so. Uh... No, I actually think she has smallpox. Uh, so I think yeah. I'm not. I'm going to pass. Well, I'm gonna pass on Are that you one. sure? I'm going to pass on that one right. Are now. you sure? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh. Question for the devs. How do you decide on which pilgrimage sites are selected and which ones are ignored? Not necessarily ignored, but which ones we utilize. I think you, you can. I don't remember this exactly, but I think you can go to all holy sites. Yeah, I don't think there. I honestly can't think of any holy site we cannot go to. I think it's automatically populated with all yeah. of your holy sites. Right. Yeah. But it's got some special localization for things like Rome, where it says Vaticano and, and yeah. such. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, the one that I was thinking of is that I, at least I haven't encountered from outside Iberia is Santiago de Compostela, um, because while uh, Jerusalem and the Vatican are really important, and Cologne's really important. Like the entire, I mean, there's there's a pilgrimage route across Europe heading towards Santiago. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you, sort of you can go you can go there, uh, and I think it, there's a special localization where you pick up a seashell. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Maybe I just have maybe I just haven't gotten it. I mean, one of the things about this game is that there's oh there's man, a there's lot. that was a conversation <laughs> about that seashell. Yeah, I think there's the there's another page of pilgrimage locations when you get the first event. You can click it, and then you get all the other places that you can go to, which but would be I'm something. No longer, I'm no longer trying to get... You could grab a groomed, groomed to rule, rule. Yep. to make yeah, your, your my, air even my better. Air, yeah. And then maybe switch to intrigue, just saying. Would you like intrigue? All right. You can't switch yet, but soon. I find it very intriguing. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Soon. Yeah. All right. Oh man. Just, just watch. We're heading. Also, very <laughs> historically accurate. The the fact that Brittany is a big pain in the ass. Yeah. To the absolutely. Brand. I mean, like, absolutely, a hundred percent accurate. So. Yeah. No. I mean, just watch out. We don't. Ooh. We don't piss the Vatican off. You wouldn't be very popular if you did. Oh, wow. You're welcome. I just brought up a random page in the book that I had marked, and I just love this, that you had segregated spiritual celebrities or athletes, and that one of the, the things they did was wrestle imaginary demons. Yes. Which is... Well, I can just imagine people... Oh, yeah. well, of course, I mean. Yeah. I think I'm too compassionate to execute people, but... What can I move? See, I can't move him to the dungeon either. I'm just going to leave him in prison. Look, All right, we still fine. do that. We still have people wrestling imaginary demons. We just now call it interpretive dance. Oh, <laughs> now, I just really like the idea of people being pious by seeking out a really well-trained 
um, yeah. hermit and watching them wrestle the air. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, there, there's something fascinating about that. And I sort yeah. of want this to is, use that idea. <laughs> this is Eastern monasticism, which, although they still would often gather in communities, it was sort of individuals together. Um, but the, sort of the, the individual struggle uh, towards towards extreme piety, um, yeah. which turns out to be really hard. And and in the, the eyes of the, the sort of church leaders, uh, you're likely to get it wrong if you're doing it on your own. And so Western monasticism that starts to look at sort of doing it in these, these corporate, not corporate like modern corporations, but corporate in the sense of lots of bodies coming together into one institution under a much more structured rule yeah. is in some ways, you know, a big innovation to try to, to try to do this incredibly important work, but do it right. Now I'm going to go back to crushing the Breton nobility. Yeah. But hermits, I mean, hermits never disappear. I mean, they're, they're always present in throughout medieval Europe and, and, you know, Alexander, you're absolutely right. Like, like, it's weird because they talk about how they lived a solitary life, but then the 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 texts that are written about their lives, like there's visitors there constantly, and they're they're there to ask advice or to to gain spiritual guidance or something like that. And then every once in a while, like the hermit will go off into the bushes and like literally, in some cases, like just wrestle with the, the Lucifer who appears and has to you know he has to, to to beat him off or something like that. So, so what you're saying is it takes a long time to become a hermit. You have to get a lot of hermits together, put them all in one place, <laughs> leave them there for a while. One might even call it a hermit age. I mean, <sighs> please stop. <laughs> I don't I don't know how you come up with these. It's terrible. All right, I'm just trying to think about who... Oh, look, I've got my, my sister, who I cleverly married matrilineally. That was very smart of me an hour ago. Um, don't is, you boo me. Out here. Don't you boo me, chat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> is the chat booming you? Every, um, everyone, so everyone, everyone boos me. It's okay. Excellent. She's not in my court. No, trying to figure out what to do with what to do with. Uh, with uh, no, she is. Wait, wait. Where are where are the kids? I think I think she's often. I think they're off in Denmark. But hang on, let's. Uh, that man didn't boo. Was she? I thought I, she she was in your court, right? I, I think. I think so. But I think maybe someone inherited something. I'll check in oh. one second. I'm trying to decide. I'd like to keep William on good terms is the issue. I don't really want to give him a lot of money. Oh, man. So, actually, an interesting question for everyone involved, aside from me. Uh, weren't the Norman kings as dukes of Normandy having to give fealty to the king of France? Why wouldn't this dual fealty system... Why wasn't this dual fealty system implemented? It was. No. It I absolutely mean, was. I think in the oh, game. In the no. game, yeah. Oh, yeah. Game. Okay. yeah. In the game, it's mostly a clarity issue. Um, yeah. it, it, you know, the, it has to be a game first and foremost, and something like that is incredibly hard to show, yeah. <laughs> because it was incredibly complex in real life. And yes, we admit to this being a rather simplistic version of feudalism, but it's at least one that's somewhat clear to the player. And yeah. I'm not saying it's nothing we would explore in the future, but that's the reasoning why we do not have dual um, leashes and similar. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Makes sense. There's also, I mean, there's a reality too. I think in the medieval period, um, in the European Middle Ages, with these these issues of dual fealty, in which you had these weird things like, well, William is a great example because he was he was a king, so he's on par with Philip in one sense, but he's also a Duke of Normandy, so he's he's subject theoretically to to the King of France in another sense. So, but like the king, the King of France, like Philip wouldn't have any authority really to summon him to court. Like Philip, like William would just say, like, no, thank you. Um, I'm yeah. good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here. Yeah. Have a have a great day, yeah. Philip. Um, because the, that's just kind of reality. And, and Philip, I don't think, or any any you know ruler in that sense would have recognized that as well. Like they wouldn't have have tried that unless they were really trying to antagonize um, the other person, which which was a possibility, of course. But yeah, taking a uh, a branch of my family and bringing them in. Ah, uh, what a wonderful specimen you found! <laughs> yeah, he's he's great. Look at this. Uh, Raffle, got, uh, lustful, wrathful, lustful, and content, and, and a drunkard. drunkard. Man, Fantastic. I mean, at, at least he will be satisfied great. with just drinking in his new lands, right? Yeah, that, that definitely him. sounds like the kind of guy I want to have as a vassal. Yeah, yeah. you want to give him the yeah. whole duchy? Yeah, you can give him too, which makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure about the duchy, and I might just—I think I only have two duchies, so I may just hang on to that one for a little bit. 
Oh, and see what happens there. Man, my buddy Ikibu in chat coming in with uh w with a contentious take. The English have better food. Why would he leave? That's a it's a bold claim. Wow, first time it's I've a, heard that it's one. A bold claim. I mean, the thing the thing about the Normans is that they were French the whole time. They lived in Normandy. <laughs> they didn't like going to England mostly, except when they had to. It's really a long time into the 13th century when they lose Normandy that the that the English kings start to really focus on on England, right? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, when William the Conqueror dies, right, like his firstborn son and heir gets the du the Duchy of Normandy. It's his secondborn um, who gets the, um, uh, the the King of England, right? Yeah. The Kingdom of England. Yeah. Like the, the Duchy of Normandy is is the prize, at least initially, not later on. But see, all these people, Everyone people are annoying me. Yeah, they're they're all they're all kind of meh. They're all kind of meh. Yeah. Well, That's let's a better go ahead and start. Marshall, yeah, there you go. He's a good marshal, yeah. But he's he's a problem, right? He's already rebelled against me once. He's forced me to give him kind of non-revocation rights. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... The French nobili nobility are a big problem for the French king, and also for me in this game, and I like that. That's good. Um, That's that's good. Ah, but you were just insulted by him. King William. <laughs> I know, because he didn't like my military Hate expertise, it. and you know why? I don't really have any. That's why. <laughs> He's like, that's, that's, wow, <laughs> you're you're a nerd. That's fair. <laughs> we're talking about etiquette. Yeah, yeah. Literally, literally shouting across the channel, nerd. Yeah. 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 Thanks. I mean, what so I what I like about playing Philip the First, right, is that he's he's okay, right? He's he's handling it. He's doing pretty well, but he's not. Um, you know, he's not a he's not a genius. He's not. <laughs> well, you know, he's not a great thing. Yeah, he's back to talking to me. What the fuck? <laughs> he's back. Again. God. <laughs> Who gave him a pen again? He's like, wow, I, I'm gonna <laughs> I have to give this right, hopeless right, guy another again. I'm gonna try it again. Try it again. If at first you don't succeed, yeah. continue to write letters back and forth. Man. Just right off the bat, just look, here's this great thing. Oh, you're you're a jerk and a nerd. Anyway, here you wanna try again? Like, come on, man, make up your mind. Now you can definitely move on to intrigue if you want after yeah, this break. Yeah. I'm trying to decide what I want. I mean, Art of the Family Soul. Befriend, maybe? So you have that skill yeah, available? I like, yep. I like the Befriend skill. It's often pretty useful. So let's go into Intrigue. Skullduggery. Yeah. I do love me yeah. some Skullduggery, man. I mean, I honestly think Temptation is a little more Philip, but we'll go ahead and pick Skullduggery, <laughs> and we're gonna start. We're gonna start seeing what we can do with with intrigue to crack England a little bit. You are already pretty fertile so far. Yeah, so, yeah. No, yeah. I've got plenty of kids. Yeah. yeah. Would you say that taking Temptation was a tempting offer? No. <laughs> it was a. Te it was tempting. All right. Let's go ahead. And save, All right. Save. Do we? Because what I want to figure yep. out, like. I mean, if we can, who be dying want... of civil war among your children? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that usually happens. But yeah. what we, what, what I'd like to have happen is for William to die, and then to be a civil war among his children. Yep. Uh, that would be. That's what we're kind of waiting for. But I, I do think we have to wait. Uh, Ooh, liberty five faction. Five members. Ooh, that's a problem. Ooh. Here is where a well placed gift could help a lot, because it yeah. seems like they're just above the threshold to be bold enough. Yeah. So. Yep. It's not as good as I would like. I should have taken I should have taken uh the the gift the gift benefit. Let's see if we can befriend him up a little too. If we have time. We might not have time. Sometimes I just imprison them too if we have a pretty good imprison shot. But no, no not, that's not that is that's terrible. just gonna start that's just gonna start the the, the, the revolution right away. Um, well, oh, we'll you can offer wards as well. That's a very good way of increasing opinion. Yeah. I mean, it would just be good to... I, well, what I need to do is, is check on... Like, those guys have a lot of... It would be good to pull this guy out. Um, right, I do have a lot of kids. I can spare one. Ooh, I didn't even realize she was yep. intelligent. Yep. Pretty good. Uh, <laughs> your bastard daughter. That's right, yep. you can have my... You can. Talk to my bastard. Oh, you got stressed because okay. you're paranoid. I like it. Here, talk to my child. That's definitely my child and definitely, <laughs> definitely not a problem. Don't worry about it. Oh, overwhelmed by stress. 
Uh, Surprise! Let's, uh, let's hope yeah, you I get. Mean, it, was, it was always going to happen. Uh, I'm going to bite my lip and stay focused. I don't like to sequester. Um, I'm definitely not going to shift out of out of uh, oh, to the story. Here comes some more. The Nestorianism, the dominant Christian um, denomination in the East, right? According to the book. Uh, in the in the in the. In the Far East. Yeah, in the Far um, East. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are, there are historians in China. Mm -hmm. In the, I think it's the eighth century. There's a in Xi'an. There's a big. There's a big steel stele. I don't know how to pronounce it. Actually, it's um, that that documents the arrival of historians in China. Yep. Um, in the ninth century, and then and then they. I mean, they, the the Christians of the Mongol Empire, of which there are many at a very high rank, um, are. Uh, historians see now i'm a little low on money though well just win this war faster right well yeah she that's can that's rob. What they always say. your adventure could rob this bandit in the first one if you risk it yeah i think that's the right one to give it a shot and if she fails she fails she did Aha! fantastic money. good work uh there was a question about bookmarks earlier um bookmarks are very they're they, they take a lot of work to get those bookmarks um, would you like to add anything else to that about the? No, not really. We okay. we will we will add bookmarks over time, when okay. there's the time is right to do so. Yeah. With interesting, well researched characters with intriguing starting positions. Yeah. And then for the authors, um, does your work focus on non-Christian realms in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, or India? Yeah, our our main focus is 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 medieval Europe, and so we talk a lot about kind of Christian lands, but we make sure that we include. I mean. Um, we make sure that we 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 talk about people who are non-christian as well part of the reason for that for example is that one of the contentions we have which i think is is solidly grounded is that islam for example is a european religion and has always been a european religion since mm -hmm. its foundation that doesn't mean it's only a european religion in any way shape or form but that there have been muslims in europe since really the very, the very beginning of of um of the tradition Right. And, and so to try to write them out of history and to only focus on, um, uh, you know, kind of white Christian men or something like that, that's not a full history of the period. And right. so we, we spent a lot of time making sure that we, we, we talk about how that that's an inaccurate way of thinking about the European Middle Ages as a as kind of a closed off space in which people didn't move um, across different centuries and from their, uh, very different uh, places. Um, we do move into the Far East, you know, for a little bit of period, but because the book is really about medieval Europe, we we try to stay focused there. Um, you know, we talk about the Mongols um, because of the Mongol um, intervention into Europe and into the, to what what's, what we now call the Middle East and the later Middle Ages. Um, but also because that's the vector of transmission by which we get the Black Death. Yeah. Right. Is that scholars know as we talk about that the uh, the transmission was probably uh, or the, the plague moved from the um, the uh, furry mammals of um, Western China on grain carts yep. that moved with the Mongol armies and then kind of spread from there. And then, you know, obviously decimated Europe for, you know, three or four years afterwards. And well, actually and stayed in Europe for centuries afterwards yeah. as well. Yeah. Our, our bribery plan worked by the way. Hooray! Yep. Good. Fantastic. Now those three uh, can can stay in there and be discontent all they want. They're not gonna do anything. Pulled the pulled the fangs right out of their <laughs> out of their uh, rebellion. Yeah, I mean, I might I might try to befriend this guy and keep it going. That's good, actually. That, so that's something I I've played this game a lot too, but I have rarely rarely tried to be nice and get out of a get a faction to disband on its own rather than trying yeah. to to um. You just know, crush them. <clears throat> Being nice can get crush you them, far. Crush sometimes. them or, or spot, spy on them and get some hooks and, yeah. and ban them from factions that way. I mean, that's much more what I what I've done. I like. It's a valid I mean, play style. Yeah. Yeah, but but being nice, like in fact, dividing and conquering through picking favorites and being nice. I mean, I could bestow royal favor too. Um, you know, these, especially in this period, like that's what the king could do. Was, yeah. You know, write you a letter. You know, give you a present or something. Something like that. Oh, they got more inspirations. Reading perspective. It's also how you shatter an alliance. You send a gift to one of them, and everyone distrusts them immediately. Then they right. start infighting, right. and that's game over. Who thought it was time to hold court? Ah, uh, yes. Let's see what happens this time. Courty, courty, court.
Yeah, I, I really like the whole court dynamic, although it often is incredibly inconvenient. But, you know, so were actual nobles. They were very yeah. inconvenient a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and if you want to use those uh, powerful grandeur bonuses, you have to inconvenience yourself now and then. That's right, that's right. But they're they're really powerful. Um, I don't really like Heinrich. I'm not going to do that. What, you don't want to to use your disguise tricks? No, I just am going to say no. What, a, say what no. a sneaky, dirty, oh. underhanded thing. Just, here, put on this disguise. Goodbye. Yeah. I definitely don't want him. I also love the, the new court music. My brother-in-law lost his crown. Did you wow. get him in or that didn't take him out? Yeah, that didn't take long at all. Well, interesting. All all the options are bad. How come I, all my options are bad here? Well, um, I guess the I second guess option be... isn't very um, it isn't bad for you. <laughs> it's bad for him though. Yeah, real real bad. Um, yeah, too bad. My sister. I mean, her her. My sister, who's married to him, did try to kill me. So yeah. you know. Sorry about your husband. Well, you was just thinking about killing you. In fairness. <laughs> Um, Oof, do you really want to ruin the acceptance ooh, between the Bretons yeah. and the French? I mean, the Bretons are not that important. Just hand grenade out. Wow. Wah. We were talking about <laughs> living together just a second ago, and I think as of the culture update that came with Royal Court, it's become yeah. so viable to rule a multicultural empire that wasn't possible yeah, I really before. Like the Royal Cultural really like update? Yeah, alright, fine. I'll spend all of my money <laughs> appeasing the Bretons. The peas and the Bretons. Um, the Cretan Bretons. Oh, how's my grandeur still doing pretty well? Still third in the world. Only beaten by Byzantium my... and and who else? Um, I think I think Egypt, but we can check that in a second. Yeah, yeah, Heinrich. <laughs> he sent the, this I'm letter, and you're like, wrong. nah, not reading that. <laughs> The the poor messenger uh, like comes all this way from his court and he's like, My lord has delivered a letter and you're like, Yeah, I would have yeah, the, the, the the <laughs> too long the didn't read. Yeah. T T L D R too long didn't read. <laughs> Crumple it up. I ain't reading all that, but I'm sorry that it happened.